She could be the sweetest, warmest, most loving person in the world. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shocking twists that came early in the movie. What do you want me to do? You want Nick and Amy to be likable. After that, you invent. For this list, we're looking at unexpected plot twists and developments that occurred relatively early in the movie, throwing its viewers for a massive loop. Needless to say, spoilers are unavoidable. Which of these did you find the most unexpected? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Vincent Vega is killed. Pulp Fiction. We have it. Vincent! We happy? Yeah, we happy. Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction is a tour de force of narrative twists and turns. One big example is the surprising and greatly unexpected death of John Travolta's Vincent Vega. Vega was undoubtedly the star of the film, being the centerpiece of its first two major stories. Viewers were comfortable having Vega as the primary protagonist, but then Bruce Willis and the Gold Watch were introduced and threw everything into question. It's in this segment that Vega is unceremoniously killed by Willis's butch as he emerges from the apartment bathroom. It comes out of nowhere, and just like that, the movie has disposed of its main character. Fortunately, viewers were able to see more of Vega owing to the movie's non-chronological structure. You want some bacon? No, man, I don't eat pork. Are you Jewish? No, I ain't Jewish. I just don't dig on swine, that's all. Why not? Pigs are filthy animals. I don't eat filthy animals. Number nine, a new superhero, Hancock. I swear to Christ, your head is going up the driver's ass, his head is going up your ass, and you drew the short stick because your head is going up my ass. Co-written by Breaking Bad creator Vince Gilligan, Hancock begins its life as a dark comedy about a washed up superhero who is hated by the populace of Los Angeles. You're all idiots. You're the one that threw the dude's car at her. And what with the train? Why didn't you just go straight up in the air with the car? It's a funny twist on the genre, and viewers were perfectly happy watching 90 minutes of it. But that wasn't to be. Jason Bateman plays Ray Embry, a public relations specialist who offers to work with Hancock. He has a wife named Mary, played by Charlize Theron. Midway through the movie, viewers learn that Mary is actually Hancock's immortal ex-wife and a fellow superhero. Technically speaking, he's my husband. Holy shit. What? We broke up decades ago, long before you were born. He just can't remember. Hancock had forgotten this owing to amnesia. Unfortunately, some critics thought this a clumsy reveal and argue that the first half of the movie is far superior to what they consider its underdeveloped second. Number 8, The Crawlers, The Descent. This horror film is another example of a first half that could have worked perfectly well on its own. A group of thrill-seeking friends get together for a spelunking adventure, only to get lost in an uncharted cave system. This makes for some great claustrophobic fun, and the horror is firmly rooted in an unsettling reality. Sarah, you have to calm down. And the only way you're gonna do that is to breathe, yeah? Okay, breathe, slowly. Just keep breathing. However, the group is then attacked by subterranean creatures known as crawlers, and the crawlers have an appetite for human flesh. The movie pivots into a survival slasher tale as the group of friends are systematically taken out by the crawlers. <laughs> Unlike Hancock, many critics thought this is a great twist, marrying two unique halves into a satisfying whole. Number 7, Charlie Graham Dies, Hereditary. 
This Ari Aster horror film earned widespread praise and is often regarded as one of the greatest horror films of the 2010s. Part of its strong reception is undoubtedly due to the malicious yet brilliant bait and switch concocted by the marketing department. Millie Shapiro's Charlie Graham was plastered all over the movie's marketing material, including the posters and trailers. It was very obvious that the story was centered around her and the supernatural connection she shares with her deceased grandmother. However, Charlie is nothing but a decoy protagonist as she suffers a horrific fate about 30 minutes into the movie. Are you okay? It's hard to breathe. What do you mean? I think my throat's getting bigger. It was a genuinely unexpected moment, and it left viewers in a chilling state of shock. Charlie! <laughs> Number six, Teddy Gamble's reveal, Memento. This being a Christopher Nolan film, Memento contains a labyrinthine plot that can prove confusing and hard to follow. The movie has a unique structure, with two stories being told concurrently, one of which is shown in black and white and the other of which is being told backwards. Now I know, you fake it. If you think you're supposed to recognize somebody, you just pretend to. You bluff it to get a pat on the head from the doctors. You bluff it to seem less of a freak. In one of the film's greatest sequences, the black and white and backwards colour storylines converge, revealing Joe Pantoliano's Teddy Gamble is the undercover police officer that Leonard is meeting. Lie to yourself to be happy, there's nothing wrong with that. We all do it. Who cares if there's a few little details you'd rather not remember? It's very hard to convey without actually seeing the movie, but it proves an incredible mid-story reveal that changes everything we thought we knew about protagonist Leonard Shelby. Lenny. I was the cop assigned to your wife's case. I believed you. I thought you deserved a chance for revenge. Number five, we learn who done it early. Knives Out. This surprise hit served as writer-director Ryan Johnson's clever and subversive take on the whodunit genre. Like all whodunits, the movie begins with a mysterious death, that of rich novelist Harlan Thromby, who is believed to have taken his own life. Um, we're attempting to be thorough so we can figure out the manner of death. So by manner of death, you mean if someone killed him, if, if, if one of us killed him, one of his no, family no, walls, walls, killed him. No, Is that no. what you're suggesting, Lieutenant? No. Of course, this being a whodunit mystery, the answer can't be that simple. Only, it actually is. As viewers learn about 30 minutes in, Harlan did indeed kill himself, slitting his throat after his nurse Fran accidentally mixed up his medications. You were seen leaving, the security cameras show you driving off, and 20 minutes later, I'm seen alive and well by my son. <laughs> you see, you've gone from suspect number one to an impossibility. This unpredictably answers the whodunit mystery long before the story's conclusion. Instead, the story shifts to Fran's cover-up attempts, and the mystery turns to the events surrounding the mix-up and death, resulting in a wonderful deconstruction of the whodunit. Donut hole has a hole in its center. It is not a donut hole, but a smaller donut with its own hole. And our donut is not a hole at all. Number four, vampires from dusk till dawn. Quentin Tarantino loves to play with narrative conventions. In penning the cult classic From Dusk Till Dawn, he pulled off one of the most masterful genre shifts in movie history. The movie begins as a crime drama following bank robber brothers Seth and Richie Gecko. I want him out of here, in his car, and down the road, or you can change the name of this place to Benny's World of Blood. After robbing a liquor store, the brothers kidnap a pastor and are smuggled across the Mexican border. Once there, they arrive at a desert strip club that is run by vampires. <laughs> Just like that, a crime drama turned into a vampire action flick reminiscent of the cheesy B-movies of the 70s. Unfortunately, this plot twist was known going in, as the movie's marketing emphasised the vampires. Luckily, that does nothing to quell its effectiveness. <laughs> Number 3. Underground Bunker – Parasite Unlike From Dusk Till Dawn, the massive plot twist found in Parasite was completely hidden. The movie begins as a dark comedy. 
침팬지를 그린 거죠? 자화상이에요. With the destitute Kim family infiltrating the rich Park family as their servants. 아 잠깐. 제시카 외동딸 일리노이 시카고 과선배는 김지모 그는 이사촌. They become the park chauffeur, housekeeper, English tutor, and art therapist, each recommending the other and keeping their familial relationship a secret. It works, and the machinations prove brilliant and hilarious. But midway through the movie, the previous housekeeper, Moon Guang, reveals a secret underground bunker beneath the park mansion. <laughs> 여보여배말고빠지어괜찮아괜찮아저기좋은분이셔저분덕분에여기들어온그게철판이더라고이프로브스에 <웃음> <웃음> A Clockwork Orange. This Stanley Kubrick film, based on Anthony Burgess's novel of the same name, does not make for a pleasant viewing experience. It concerns Alex Delage, a psychotic teenager who takes pleasure in causing chaos and assaulting random people with his gang. <laughs> The first act follows their unsettling debauchery, and viewers begin to question the movie's point. However, a huge twist occurs about 30 minutes into the movie, and Alex is betrayed by his gang, arrested, and sent to prison for 14 years. Come on, let's go, the police are coming! One minute, the droogie! <laughs> It's here that the real story and theme emerges, as Alex is subjected to a new behavioural therapy practice known as the Ludovico Technique that aims to quell him of his violent tendencies. I had truly done my best morning and afternoon to play it their way and sit like a horror show cooperative malchick in the chair of torture while they flashed nasty bits of ultraviolence on the screen. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. The cast is killed. Death proof. The entire main cast is wiped out by stuntman Mike halfway through the movie. <laughs> Elite Hunting Club. Hostel. The titular hostel is a front for a tourist killing group known as the Elite Hunting Club. I get a lot of money for you. That make you my bitch. Amy Dunn is alive. Gone girl. The story shifts to the perspective of the missing Amy, who has orchestrated the whole thing. And she floated down past all the other abused, unwanted, inconvenient women. Then Nick will die too. Nick and Amy will be gone, but then we never really existed. John Doe turns himself in. Seven. John Doe arrives at the police station covered in blood. Detective. After this, I'm Detective. gone. No big surprise. Detective! Laura Hunt is alive. Laura. The presumed murdered Laura is revealed to be alive. What are you trying to hide? Don't you realize you're involved in a murder? You've got yourself in a jam it's not going to be easy to get out of, unless you're on the level with me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Marion Crane is killed. Psycho. Arguably the greatest left turn in movie history, Marion's death at the hands of Norman Bates is now the stuff of film legend. The first 30 minutes of the movie follow Marion as she steals money from her boss, flees the city, and stops at the Bates Motel. Dirty night. Do you have a vacancy? Oh, we have 12 vacancies. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. After befriending the welcoming, if somewhat odd, Norman Bates, Marion is murdered while taking a shower. Don't worry about it. But as long as you've fixed a supper, we may as well eat it. Everyone knows this now, but the twist was absolutely massive at the time. 
Janet Lee was the biggest star of the movie and its main selling point, so to dispose of her 30 minutes in was both incredibly gutsy and ultimately genius. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.